Hi there, I'm Jennifer Kirk. It's really good to have you along again. And uh, today we're going to be doing a box opening and review here on my YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's take a closer look. <laughs> Well, this is one of the very, very popular uh, Hornby Packet locomotives. You may remember that uh, I think it was last year these came out and it was such a whirlwind of publicity surrounding these. They were so, so popular that they were just selling out. And in some instances, I was seeing them go for stupid money. The gougers uh, got hold of them and they turned up on eBay for three, four hundred pounds each. And you'd have to have to think the old adage, a fool in their money are easily parted, uh, which does make the question how they got together in the first place. But uh, the next batch has turned up and we've got here the all over plain black version, Lillis Hall uh, number 10. This is works number 883 of I think 1901, the W4 packet and the Lillis Hall company were uh, a large engineering company in Shropshire. They had quite a large fleet of locomotives and quite an extensive internal rail network at the time. And um, well, you can tell how big their uh, rail network must have been for this to have gone into their fleet as number 10. So there was at least nine other locomotives. I think there were actually yeah, closer to 20 at one point. Um, if you look around online, you can actually find photographs of this locomotive in use. Sadly, you can also find photographs of it being scrapped. So those of a tender disposition, be careful what you look for. You may not like what you find. But we've got the Hornby model now. And uh, we've got a catalogue number R3550 Packet W4040 locomotive. And um, it actually carries its works number 883 rather than its fleet number 10. Uh, but we're going to take a look in this. I've been waiting this quite eagerly. Uh, you may remember that I did a box opening and review on, I think it's the Huntley and Palmers, uh, the very, very nice blue locomotive. And we also did an extended running session with all three. I was very lucky that I pre-ordered all three of the last group when they were announced and I was not disappointed. With this as well, I uh, learnt of um, a lot of other people's mistakes that uh, in not pre-ordering, uh, they didn't get, and unfortunately that seems to be becoming more and more a feature of the very, very popular locomotives. And um, I don't like it, you don't like it, but unfortunately sometimes if you see a locomotive announced that you really, really want, and you've got an inkling that it's going to be very, very popular, you just have to bite the bullet and pre-order it from somewhere. And uh, a lot of the local model shops are pretty good, actually. They stay true to the pre-order price. And a uh, big shout out to Tim at Arcadia Models, which is where I got this from. I pre-ordered from him and he didn't let me down. Uh, we're going to just pop it out of all of this packaging. It's pretty standard packaging and uh, quite easy to get out, actually. And uh, we can see there, the rather plain black livery, it might look pretty boring compared to the Huntley and Palmer's or the Packet Leaf Green Works livery. But actually for a lot of modellers, this is the livery that they were asking for uh, when Hornby first announced the locomotives. Well, not specifically this locomotive, but a plain dark black livery that they can then use as the basis for repainting into their sort of fictional works fleet, things like that. And uh, rather than having all of that ornate printing like we saw on the Huntley and Palmer's locomotive, this is actually a really good base for anybody who's looking to repaint or just uh, rename one of these locomotives with a minimum of fuss. It has pretty much all the same build quality of the original release. It's a very very heavy locomotive. It's something that struck me last time and it strikes me again here now. Having it in the palm of my hand where well, you can see um, 
it is a very, very tiny locomotive, but in terms of weight, it packs quite a hefty punch and that uh, really does aid its running qualities. I've had this running out in the shed and it has to be said that it runs pretty well straight out of the box. And we've also got, uh, and this is becoming quite a trademark for the Hornby models. It's something that we sort of first saw when they brought their, their full fat, top notch, class eight, class nine locomotive to the market that the uh, coupling rods on the wheels, they are very, very fine and they actually make uh, some of the models from other manufacturers such as uh, a Backman look a little bit coarse by comparison. But even though they are very, very fine, they don't appear to be weakened in any way for that. So it's really nice to see. And we've also got this pretty scale looking crosshead detail and that is awfully, awfully fine. And you might say, well, that looks something that's uh, very prone to damage. And certainly it probably pays to handle these things very, very carefully. But in running these locomotives, and I've had those other three packets now for around a year or so since they first came out. And in running them, I've seen no sign of degradation. I do carefully oil all of these um, these points in there just, just to make sure preemptive oiling. Um, use the right grade of oil, of course. And uh, they do seem to potentially give years and years of reliable ser service. Now, one of the problems I did find with the initial run of packets was the pickup wipers on the backs of these wheels, probably um, hampered somewhat by it only being a very short four-wheel wheelbase. Um, they tended to lose contact, so you could tend to find through point work or tight curves that it could have a bit of a pickup problem. Now, Hornby seemed to have addressed that. Certainly with this particular example, the pickup wipers do seem to consistently make contact, and I experienced no uh, jittery running at all. The couplings themselves, whilst I've got it upside down, you can see they're held in a pretty standard NEM pockets. We've got the slim lines fitted there, and they're very unobtrusive. If you took these out completely, you wouldn't see any trace of uh, where they mount uh, when the locomotive is on the track. We've also got again these very, very springy sanding pipes, nicely done. And because of the springy plastic they've been molded from, they do seem fairly resilient to the occasional knock there. Above the running plate, well, we've got, I think it's a full cast metal boiler and that provides a lot of the weight, but it also means if you want to DCC chip these, you have to be quite careful about how you do it. That said, I think there's um, a proprietary four pin DCC socket inside these and they're designed to take Hornby's own uh, proprietary DCC uh, chip in there. And I've seen a lot of videos online about how to do that. So it does appear to be quite straightforward, if a little bit fiddly to do that. You have to be careful how you dismantle this just to make sure you don't break any of this pipework. And whilst we're on the subject of this pipework, all of that in there, that's separately applied. They are so well done. I mean, the, le the level of detail, even though you'd look at this superficially and think, well, that's a plain black liver. It's a bit of a boring one. But there is so much detail here, and in some respects, this black livery brings out some of the detail. So this pipework and uh, other gubbins underneath here, it's actually brought to the fore more that perhaps it wasn't on some of the more garish liveried versions that came out before. We've also got finely tampo printed the works plate there, and if the previous three are anything to go by, they will be perfectly legible underneath their magnification. It's really nice to see. Inside the cab is really, for me, one of the really key selling points on these. And uh, if you can see in there, I'm gonna try and hold that really steady. And we're gonna see if we can zoom in on there. All of the back head detail and all of these controls appear to be separately applied. They're certainly separately finished. And it is just so, so pleasing to look at in there to the point where it would almost seem a shame to obscure all that by putting a foot plate crew in, because it is just so nice to see. Now, one of the detractions of the original release was the um, the porthole windows. From the outside, they look really good. So hold that up there. From the outside, they really do look fine. So well finished. But it kind of had this big plastic inside that, for me, ruined the effect. And looking in there, 
that is something that Hornby have addressed. So when you look down there, there's none of this glaring reflection from a bar of plastic. They have done this properly. And this is really good to see Hornby listening to criticism and rectifying some of these, what actually to a lot of people would seem a little bit of a minor fault, but they've gone above and beyond on this release. And that is so good to see. The windows at the front of the cab, they're still on one big glazing bar, but actually, you have to really go looking for it to tell. And I'm looking in there, we've got a gauge on the very front of the cab. I'm not even sure whether the camera's gonna be able to pick up this, but it is separately picked out and it kind of pulls the eye away from the edge of that plastic glazing bar. So actually, it's really well thought out. The buffers themselves are not sprung, but they are a turned brass head and they're pretty well attached on there. So there's no worries about them coming out. Um, oh, actually, whilst we're on the subject of inside the cab, we've also got a separately applied brake standard in there. And it's interesting, some people have commented about this. This bulge on the back is actually to accommodate the swing of the arm inside the cab. Such was the smallness of these uh, cabs. They had to have a little... Uh, um, bulbous area there so that when they were winding the handbrake on and off it wouldn't hit the back of the cab. It's just uh, interesting to see that and it's nice to see it very very finely reproduced in model form and it's not just a molded on sort of uh, bu a bulbous uh, protrusion. When you look inside the cab there is a uh, corresponding indenture so it is perfectly accurate. The face of the locomotive, just as per the previous three, is pretty well captured. We've got a separately applied metal smoke box dart, and that is separately finished in silver, which really does bring this out quite nicely. We've got very crisp rivet detail, and all of the handrails there on the boiler are separately applied, very, very fine wire handrails. When we turn to the rest of the detail, we've got a whistle on there, I think it's a turned metal whistle, but I'm not entirely sure. It is certainly very, very fine and something to bring home from the previous three releases just to warn you about is be very, very careful when handling because these were very easily broken on the previous releases. So I'm not going to put this to the test. It may be that Hornby have uh, somehow made that a little bit more resilient, but I'm just not going to put it to the test. We've also got separate brass fittings on top of the dome there. And then we've also got um, I'm trying to remember, off the top of my head, I can't remember what that is. It may be something to do with the ejector or something like that. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, on the back of the funnel there, we've got uh, a separately applied, I think it's, it could be a brass fitting, but it might be plastic. Either way, it is nicely fitted in there and the colour looks right for it to be metalised. The chimney there, we've got um, like this brass cap and I think... It feels like it could be metal, but again, I'm not going to push and shove these things too much. I don't actually want to break it, but certainly it looks like it could be metal. And that's really what counts in a scale like this. Overall, the finish on what could have been quite a boring finish, it's actually brought a lot of the detail to the fore, like the rivet detail and such. So from what could seem quite an austere uh, livery, this has actually become a livery that has shown just how good this W4 packet model from Hornby really is. On my rather arbitrary and made up on the spur of the moment scale, I can certainly award this a good solid 9.9. .9. So really, for those of you who want to appreciate the detail on this base model, this is probably the livery for you because it really brings all that detail to the fore. So well worth having in my collection. And I'm really looking forward to the next releases that are due out fairly soon, I think, for the next one. But certainly this will be a fine addition to my model collection. Well, I hope that's been informative to you. I'd just like to have a big shout out to uh, Tim at Arcadia Models, who um, very, very generously um, held one of these for me. Uh, I did pay it, so I did actually pay the full uh, retail price for this, but it's actually a really good price. He did it for the, the pre-order price, even though in a lot of places, these have been so popular that they've sold out. Uh, so consequently, the prices have been going up a little bit. Um, but he's 
helped them down to the pre-order price, which is really, really good of him. And uh, he did tell me to tell you as well that if you're really struggling to get hold of one of these, at the time of filming this, he did have around 10 of these unallocated that nobody's pre-ordered available in the shop. So if you're struggling, give him a call and he might still have one of those left for you. But until next time, you take very good care of yourself. And uh, this is me, Jennifer Kirk, saying don't forget to like this video, share it too, and also subscribe to the channel and ring that bell and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. <laughs> but you take very good care of yourself. And until next time, bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Mark McShane and Bob 310. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks, and catch you later.